But uh, uh, we need a new term. But oh, no, singularitarian where, sucks. Donkey balls. Where is and it, swallows? Like, where is the new term though? What what can we use? Do we have to like <laughs> have to fuck with the English it. language to actually? We've got to stay away from future. Futurism's already been taken, yeah, and, that, and that was a slightly, yeah, totalitarian. Well, it's funny. I'm speaking to someone afterwards, after at the conference, uh, discussing about he used to do a lot of these things. He, his ideas were a bit warped, oh, exponentially. Yeah, he yeah, no, yeah, no, it was a pro- it wasn't progressive. It was. Um, I thought it was exponentialist. No, I wasn't exponentialist. Well, it did it was something oh, no. else? Shit, progress. No, it wasn't progressive. All right, this is why we have fun. Fuck. Yeah. Been. You never know. Anyway, no, a, talk about something else. Yeah. Things, no, it was, an, it was another thing there. Uh, but I forget. Yeah, we do need another term for this movement. Oh, escalationist. Term. Escalationist. That yeah. was it. And that was it about uh, 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And, I mean, it's an interesting one. It's not going to catch on. It's definitely not. Yeah, they were all about entropy, like, which has always mm-hmm. been kind of interesting because they were about the movement against entropy. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, whatever. Yeah, um, I, I did like his his talk actually saying that, yeah, it is it is important to get in there. Like the whole Gandhi thing saying that first they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win type stuff. But um, I don't think we've found... I don't think singularity and singularitarian is the thing that's going to win. There's going to be another term that's going to pop up. And we need to make sure that when it does, we endorse it. Well, it's interesting that the, the whole... I mean, the ideas there, a lot of people have ideas. Like, I'm sure you can find singularitarians in all sci-fi conferences in a oh lot of God, tech yes. circles in yeah. like it's just it, no one wants to associate themselves yeah with there's them. the because because as soon as you, you as soon as you apply a term you apply a group yeah you, you, you have apply to assign the yourself to it whereas like if there's somehow to like some way to actually say this or, oh you agree with this therefore you're part of this broad overarching mm. circle of some sort yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, like, like how we need we... movement and we need marketing, basically. Yeah, because yeah. we we're like we we're trying to ask people at the summit, like, like very early on the first day, I think when we were first meeting people, just yeah. as an icebreaker, like how do you come across the singularity? Why? We... It was like, oh god, yeah, oh, just... <laughs> oh, 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 well, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, oh. didn't know. So I was actually thinking back, and I think I think we maybe came across it by trying to think of like, oh, what's the next trend and what will be the next yeah. futurist like. The next business idea that will be awesome on the on the internet, like social media wise and all that, and then just extrapolating beyond that, and you're like, oh, then we end up there, and then he's like, what the well, fuck? Kind of, it, <laughs> it just made sense, and then that's what everyone was saying was like singularity wise. It's like, yeah, I, I've never liked the singularity term. I hate the idea that there's a certain point. I mean, yeah. that's what singularity leads towards. It's point. silly. Burn of end, though. I mean, yeah, that's all I do. You know, the point beyond which you can't extrapolate. Yeah, it's just it doesn't relate. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, what's we'll the other? Well, Kevin B. Corby's up next. Big tall. Okay. The the optimist. I remember. Yeah. All right. So Kevin B. Corb, he's a guy, uh, you know, American AI researcher. He's been in the game for a very, very, very long time, and he decided to give a, a presentation on the ethics of AI, which yes. we found a little bit contentious. But the, the gist of it was that he was arguing that if you create, uh, you can actually create an ethical AI. He he thought that AI had to be created, and he thought that the way to make it. Uh, you know, safe and and helpful towards humanity's endeavors was to make it utilitarian, uh, in that it, it minimizes suffering. Is that the gist of the the philosophy? I think pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So um. So yeah. So he 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 was going about AI from the you know the uh the BDI network, but whatever. And um yeah, and he he was arguing that it would take hundreds of years. Yeah, kind of saying that he was trying to create it himself. Well, not just himself. No, not but himself, like but I mean that he'd create the program that yeah. would lead to AI. Was, was yeah, he said, that, I don't think AI will happen by accident. Was this the guy that mocked my question? Yeah, he was a guy that... Oh, was that ju- okay. yeah, magic? Okay. Oh, by magic. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay, okay. Can, can, can I preface this? Nathan is about to get mad, so everyone just say, you mad. <laughs> you mad, dog, you mad. What's juice? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait... But it was weird that everyone at the conference and a lot of these AI researchers seem to think that the way we're going to make AI is we're going to build it ourselves. Like, as a, an individual or as a group, as like a company. We're going to make AI, we're going to... And they, also, they almost seem, seem to put it into the realm of like, on our level. Like, we're going to make it on our level. It's almost like we're going to make it in this little, you know, container and throw it into a, a robot and that'll be the AI. That'll be like this amazing thing that we've made. <laughs> it's like... Why? Why? So warm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, please. That's the thing everyone seemed to 
<laughs> Steve Jobs get on that. <laughs> How awkward is that? It's not going to happen. It seems to be way. the way they're doing. And like it our, our viewer for a while now has been, and it's dismissed quite a lot. But I think people need to think no, about it a I, bit I more. I disagree. I don't think. I, I, Google's the major investor in Singularity University. Yeah. We, we think the AI will... Okay, I, I asked the guy, um, I said, um, basically, do you think that AI will... Uh, should I should rephrase it better. I said, emerge from the internet. I said, via semantic technology, like the semantic web and, you know, looking at emergent phenomena like, you know, ant hills and the amazing stuff that happens or the, the economy and the amazing stuff that happens on top of that, all, all that sort of stuff. Just behaviour that it didn't protect. And he was like, oh, it's not going to happen like magic. I'm like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> It was a pretty epic burn because he basically uh, said, "Oh, it was by magic." He got and then just off. stopped looking at him and then went on to the next question. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Oh my god, he was fuming. Bru- and yeah. Nathan was fuming like crazy. Yeah. Because on top of that, this guy's like, he's a he's an AI researcher. I don't know how much he, he does. Was from uh, what, it wasn't Cornell. It was one of the Ivy Leagues in the states. He's, he's like, been oh, at it for a long time. He's pretty. He's like, like AI is going to happen yeah. in all oh, maybe like two, three hundred years. I was like, what are you? Fucking yeah. stupid. <laughs> he has no idea of emergence. No. It's great. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... Uh, yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've been talking about that. He was saying about the AI of uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, we had a, a lively discussion afterwards. I, I, it wasn't with him. It was with uh, other people that uh, took his point at the conference. And uh, it was saying that, oh, yeah, we need to actually instill it a positive AI, a, a, yeah. a positive ethical environment towards us because we don't know if they'll destroy us, we don't know if they'll do that. And I mean, it really comes down to just just logically speaking here that, I mean, we're creating an intelligence greater than our own. Like, that's yeah. the first assumption. Just take that assumption, okay? <laughs> if, that, if that assumption's true, why can't it actually adjust anything we can adjust? Like, programming-wise, like any of its control variables, anything like that. Of course, it can actually analyze its ethics, analyze anything like that, and say, I don't need that. It doesn't actually work yeah. towards anything. It doesn't work towards that. If it's, it's irrational. So, yeah, it's so silly. It's so ignorant to think that we're creating a greater intelligence and we can handicap it. What the fuck? A truncated AI, basically. Yeah, like, ha- we're creating something greater than our own, or we have to handicap it to actually make it okay. That's what ethical AI is talking about. Handicapping a greater intelligence than our own. Grow up! I have this feeling the whole talk of ethical AI is merely to pander to the masses. Oh, yeah, I agree. Because oh my like, god, oh, Terminator 3, they'll kill yeah, us all! Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, okay, um, um, we'll, we'll make it ethical, yes. Oh. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be a nice AI, yeah. It's pathetic. <laughs> Logically speaking, it makes no sense. The Garris took a big offence to that. Oh, well. he did. I, I, I really I respect the Garris by I, saying that. I apologise. I got his details wrong. He's actually at Monash University, so maybe he's from the States. Monash? No, no, yeah. he was at the state. He got his um, PhD or something at... I'm just I'm just looking at his publication list and it's all yeah see publication page at Monash University. I thought it was like it, it, yeah see I, I thought it, I I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely it post somewhere, details. It was somewhere Ivy League in the states. I'm pretty yeah, we'll we'll definitely post the details online. Sorry about getting the details wrong here. Right, but anyway, yeah. Long story short, just ethical AI seems. He seems to be beating yeah. to a very different drum to a lot of the other people at the conference. It just which isn't a bad off. thing. Which isn't a bad thing, but oh, it's good. It, it encourages a lively discussion. Yeah. Also, the idea of it utilitarianism like that's all about suffering right how do you how do you define suffering for a machine and how, how do you equate suffering in a machine to the same as uh, to a human being like there's so many parameters that you need to work out and if you get one of those things wrong then your truncated AI which won't know any better because you made it dumb will will go on a horrible rampage it's like a bunch of ants getting together and saying we're going to make a human brain yeah it's like <laughs> there's a bunch of ants together saying that we're going to make a hive that's ethical are yeah. you fucking kidding me ethical ants I yeah. love that it's silly Anyway, next speaker. All right. So the next speaker is actually an Australian artist. Really? He's uh, called Stellark. He um, does he have a real name? No, oh, right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm anyway, sure Google, Google. <laughs> S- hey, I, I tell you what, we'll put the name up in the bottom. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. hey. Um. Anyway, but yeah, he gave a very interesting, very confronting uh, presentation, I suppose, uh, upon the the corpse of Chimera and the. I oh, saw his penis. You saw his face? <laughs> there was a video and he was in his exoskeleton. High level of discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. And everybody else looked away, but he looked intently. Uh, yeah, anyway. Now. I was like, what is that? What? No. Anyway, but... Okay. <laughs> what, what, what do you so think, what, had, what do you think Stellac means? 
Okay, so he's he's pushing transhumanism into, into artistically. Yeah, like, you know, people people talk about transhumanism a lot. You know, scientific. Uh, you know, I suppose. What would you say? Like. Abstractly, they yeah. talk about it abstractly. Okay. They yeah. they talk about these possibilities as you know things that you could do. Yeah. This is this is a guy that's basically just gone off and, and done, done them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, hey, we can put machines in our body. Yeah, I'm gonna go put a machine into my stomach via an endoscope and film it. That was one of his. Uh, that was one of his <laughs> more confronting works. Or alternatively, uh, you know, hey, we could potentially grow, uh, you know, uh, organs and uh, tissue uh, using tissue engineering. He or- he put an ear in his arm like he's, he's really it's going crazy. out the he's thing that I things. loved was uh, he actually attached his body to the internet yeah uh, pretty much yeah. and he let people control it yeah uh, just electrical responses and, and all these different dance arms. all these different dance movements he, he would do shit and he could actually see the person doing stuff he was just linked to one computer and uh, he could actually view the person but it was just electrical responses moving his body and arm I mean that's cool that is cool I mean He's pushing it artistically, which, when you look at it, most things happen usually artistically first, and then people go, hey, that, that could actually work. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, he's using modern technology. Like, he's using these modern, exponentially growing technologies as his artistic medium, which is yeah, just... Yeah, like ro- robotic prosthetics yeah. and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah robotic prosthetics, yeah, exoskeletons, he... Actuated stuff. Mm. Yeah. Also then, yeah. And, like, he, like a, a big part of his philosophy was just sort of questioning what is a body. Like, yes. he, he brought up this idea of fractal flesh. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the body that you're born with is is not necessarily the, the, the pure constraints of your body. Like, a piece of technology can become integrated and mm-hmm. become part of you. Like, you know, with these presentations, he's using satellites, he's using uh, prosthetics, he's using bionics, he's using all these crazy things. that And, you know, the flesh is becoming fractal. Like, it's just becoming multidimensional in all these different sort of media, yeah. which is really neat. I think that's going to become more and more important as time goes on that, I mean to have artists to actually push the limit a bit. And I mean, he he did. I mean, he there, there was one uh, thing when he was younger, actually having hooks in his arm and flesh and body actually working around, like, actual hooks hanging up like a meat. Yeah, he'd become yeah. a marionette, basically, to a yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it. people have done that. Yeah, yeah it's just cool. showing... I've it. seen a lot of videos of that. Yeah. 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 And, and even the, what, I mean, like, the electrical responses, like, doing whatever you want and stuff, or he attached himself to, like, a, a six-legged spider weird thing, where as he'd try to move, the six-legged spider thing would move with him. Mm. I, I think that's needed. It, it's kind of cool that, I mean, as you associate that with new, newer and newer technology, it becomes awesome. You so can show what's possible. In some respects you probably want a few more people picking it up because he, he's very much focusing upon, I suppose, the elements that, that confront and scare people and I think he's trying yeah. to bring them out into the fore. Whereas yeah. other people might might potentially go for for the elements that are a bit less confronting and maybe try to yeah. try to get it a, a little bit more maybe popular what's the term like maybe maybe Your dumb life. it down a little bit. Maybe maybe because happy transhumanism. Because <laughs> transhumanism is actually a bit scary. Like, mm. all things considered, you know, we're, we're talking about technology that we don't fully understand and we're integrating into a body that we yeah. do not fully understand. It's that question of, like, the if, if there was a better uh, arm, would you cut your own arm off and yeah. replace it? I mean, well, the whole idea of augmentation, eh? The whole idea of augmentation. He brought that up, having it that his arm here had a third arm coming off the side. Yeah. And that operated through his muscles in his stomach, I think. And it was... He did this great thing on glass, actually writing a word... <laughs> Yeah, With three arms at once. <laughs> yeah, it's fine words. It's just pretty really fantastic. The coolest thing about his talk was his laugh. Oh, Ooh, God. Yeah. If I could Man, have... he had the coolest evil laugh could, ever. Could we put a pause in right now and then have the laugh? Oh, I'll, I'll somehow find it. And okay, put well, it. let's do that. Just it a pause. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think uh, Ian, someone, yeah, Ian has it. Okay, pause and we'll yeah. have his laugh. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, Ian recorded it and, and those guys. Yeah. Ian and Matt and... Yeah. yeah. Awesome guys, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, alright, so anyway, so no, like, no. cool, evil laugh, but really pushing the boundaries. And we need artists. He's, like he's getting, he's getting a, uh, quite a bit of um, media coverage as well. Like with he's his, just a with bit old. Performances? Perhaps, maybe, but still, he's, he's really trying to push it. Like, oh, I think the is. things that he's picking up right now is the rapid prototyping. Like, we need the old idea of 3D printing people, people in their 20s doing some crazy yeah. shit with the new t-